logically about how violence is not an efficient means of solving a problem, I think that would bring clarity to a lot of us who are trying to adopt a nonviolent way. Vincent, why don't you start off? When I hear the example that you started out with, Sydney, the Bin Laden murder, what came to my mind when I first heard about that was another situation of terrorism that I was very close to. I was deeply involved in the movement that took place in Birmingham, Alabama in 1963, which helped to open up to the world what was wrong in our society and what needed to be made right, especially along the lines of white supremacy and the oppression of people of color. You may remember that weeks after the March on Washington of August 1963, in September 1963, the 16th Street Baptist Church had a bomb placed at its base, near its basement, and the bomb went off. It was a terrorist act, and it resulted in the death of four young Sunday school girls and the injury to a good many other people in the church. What I remember is a conversation that I had with two of the most magnificent teachers of nonviolence that I knew in that movement. Diane Nash was one of them, and at the time she was married to another great practitioner, James Bevel was his name. Diane told me sometime after that terrorist explosion that she and Jim were in another state visiting another freedom worker when they got the news over television that that bombing had taken place and that those children had been killed. And as two of the deepest believers in the way of nonviolence, they nevertheless immediately said, we've got to get back to Birmingham and we've got to find out who did that terrible work, and we've got to make sure that they never are able to do anything like that <coughs> again. And they had great, understandable, some would say justifiable anger, and the move in them was for revenge and retribution. But as they sat with their friends, thinking about that action. They began to rethink that initial response. And they said to each other, we cannot copy that terrible path of violence. That is not who we are. That is not what we believe in. 
we will be unfaithful to ourselves, to all the people who are part of our movement, we must think in another way about how to respond. We must respond, but we must find another way. And what they decided was that they would return to Alabama, but they would devote all of their time and attention and skills to the work that was at that moment just beginning in Selma, Alabama, where a voting registration campaign was going on. And they said, we decided that if we could really bring black people into the electorate to change those who are running that state, we can change the atmosphere, change the setting, so that the possibility of such terrorism will be reduced. And so they decided then to go to Selma to work on voter registration. And as you know, eventually that marvelous Selma movement ended up with that march from Selma to Montgomery. They had spent two difficult, costly, dangerous years working on the response to the death of the children. And what came out of it was the opening of another level of democracy in this country. And in a deep sense, the death of the children led not to the death of more people, but to the opening of new life, new possibility for this country.